Uh-oh, let me adjust this. Okay, I think we're live. I'm getting better. If anybody's there, let me know. Hi. Thank you for coming in. I'm just getting everything set up. Is it horizontal? Somebody let me know. Hello, Lazy Liz Life. Hi, Miss Wisdom. Hi, Nightingale387. Hi, Tanya. Chrissy Talk. Oh, great. Thank you. I'm learning, trying to get better at this. The lighting looks a little off on my laptop. Thank you. I'm going to try a different light. Garden in Eden, thank you for coming. You're darn right. Hello. It is horizontal. Great. Thank you. This is a new um, tripod I'm trying out. My YouTube daughter sent me the money to get it. Everything look, everything seemed good on your end. Thank you so much. I appreciate all of you all coming. Hello, Lolita Edwards. Hello, Buttercup. My tone is elevated. And my, my voice... Thank you, because my brother keeps telling me I'm yelling. I'm trying to lower my voice. Is that better? Somebody just let me know. I don't like this light. Okay. Well, those of you that tuned in early, can you put your questions in all caps for me? And then I'll start five after seven, uh, what I was going to talk about. Loving oh, Ash 3, thank you for coming. The lightning is okay. Great. Thank you. I was blessed to get this... Um, new tripod and now i can get in front of the camera and do more work outside angela early if anybody has a question go ahead and type it in The first blooms on my Improve My Lemon Tree have all fallen off. What next? Will I get lemons this year? Yes, it's a possibility that you will still get lemons. Um, lemons will usually, as like most fruit trees, if the tree can't handle the fruit, they will drop it. But you should still see more blooms coming soon. And can you tell me how old is your uh, Meyer lemon tree? 
Miss Cheryl, did you get a moment to look at my fig? No, I'm sorry, sweetie, not yet. Miss MB, I will probably get to it tomorrow. I've got a whole lot of people ahead of you. I'm so sorry. Do you have any problems with 511 and fly, fly magnets? What's 511? I think I've heard that for fish emulsion. Is that what you're talking about? But I, hi, Angela's Busy Bee. Thank you for listening. Hello, Miss Grando. Miss Grando, you should have your uh, blue wrench now. Type something in, please, to let me know. Um, I don't use a lot of 511 uh, or fishy molds because I... I know that if you give your your plant too much nitrogen, it won't produce a lot of blooms. That might be the issue with the lady with the uh, improved myelometry. You want to give your plants fish emulsion with uh, seaweed, which has more potassium. So, you darn right. What kind of snakes are good... What kind of are good for your garden? I just seen one. Those little skinny garter snakes. Some people call them garters, garden snakes, but they're called garter. And they will eat a lot of insects. And they're real little, and they look like a big fat worm, but it's a snake. Hello, Angela Garden Sense. Thank you for coming in. Garden in Eden. Okay, so now, can you leave trees in a pot or do they need to be in the ground eventually? You can leave a tree in the pot for the duration that you have it. I have a lot of trees that I have in containers. I recommend that you use 25 gallon or above. And I let my trees, all of them, stay in containers for the first three years because I live in a very weird climate. Here in North Texas, Hey, Stan, in North Texas, Zone 8A, we get a lot of rain. And I have planted trees in the ground as soon as I got them, and they died. And when we dug them up to see what was going on, they were just sitting in a pool of water. For example, May and the, uh, uh, the month of May, we got three weeks of rain continuously with flash floods. If I had young trees that weren't established in the ground during that time, they would have died. I've killed a lot of trees. I say it almost every live chat, especially peach and cherry trees because they do not like wet feet. And so I put those trees, after they got over three years old, I put them still in raised garden beds so that they can get a lot of drainage. None of my peach, none of my cherry trees, all four of them, are in the ground or a raised bed yet. And when the time comes, which would be next year for three of them, they will all go in a raised bed so that I can get adequate um, drainage. Okay, let me go back up. Hi, Bloggy Mama. And let's get back to the problems you mentioned with the fish emulsion. If you make it, if you dilute it, you shouldn't be have, um, getting maggots. But maggots can be beneficial to the soil because it feeds on decaying matter. And that will break down and turn into compost. I'm laughing because <laughs> I remember hearing that you little filthy maggot in a, I think it was Home Alone or Home Alone 2. And that's really an a, a, a insult when, if you call somebody a maggot because it eats off a of dead flesh. So maggots will not hurt your soil. I hope I answered your question. Hey, Lady Led, so good to see you here. Thank you. I have natural hair, but I like to wear my wigs a lot. But I do take care of my hair up under my wigs. Okay, I'm glad you got your question answered, MB, Miss MB. 
Okay, is there another question? Please put it in cap. Oh, I see one. No, I just answered that question about the trees. Okay, you spilled 32 ounces of 511 on your shoe and your foot, and it was tragic. Yeah, Stan, I can imagine. That's, <laughs> that's some funky stuff. Thank you, uh, Lazy Liz Life, for the compliment. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you so much. Okay, if there's not another question, I'm going to go in to what I was going. Hey, my... Um, YouTube daughter is in the house, Green Organic Love. Hey, sweetie, I want you to know that I got my tripod today, and I think the light team is a little bit better. So thanks to Green Organic Love, she donated the funds for me to get a tripod. If you don't know, I'm on a fixed income. I'm living off of my retirement. And I just started doing YouTube videos, haven't made any money yet. At least I haven't gotten paid yet. But everything that I make will go right back into my channel so that I can bring more content to you. And really, I have spent a lot of money over the last um, 90 days or more on my uh, emergency garden. And let me just share this with you. I don't video when I'm giving stuff away. I know that some people do it and they do it from their heart. But I chose not to. To, unless it's my daughter or my sons or something like that because I did I mentioned in another life um, video that I asked the lady put on some lipstick because I was gonna videotape her and she says no don't do that just give it out of the goodness of your heart okay so now I got a couple more questions and then we're gonna move yes garden love you mentioned that to me too about getting a tripod and then the next thing I'm going to get is a camera like yours, Garden Love. Okay, replanting from different pots, eggplants, and those food family. I don't understand the question, Miss Wisdom. Replanting from different pots, eggplants, and those food family. When you can elaborate more on that, um, I'll answer your question. Somebody said... Can you tell me what else can we use other than ladybugs for aphids? Mississippi Gourmet. You might not like, want to hear this, but it's hard work, but it does work. A full blast of water. Uh, either one of those spray bottles. I'm looking to see if it's outside. Oh, no, I see it. Let me show you. I'll be right up. I'll be right back. I'm going to go get, show you. Can you see this? You can use one of these where you pump it. And then you spray it. Of course, I'm inside my home, so I can't spray it. And if you blast them with a full uh, force of water, or if you have like a hose like I have a... Um, uh, you know, attachment to the nozzle, just drown them. Because this time of year, let me take off this. This time of year, where I live, I can't use what I would normally use, and that would be pure cold pressed neem oil. But today it was 98 degrees. So if the temperature is past 80, 85, I don't recommend that you use the pure cold pressed neem oil, a tablespoon with a, I just saw something. Oh, thank you, Misha. A tablespoon in a gallon. Because what happens is, you see these leaves? The oil will still remain after the water dries up and you will coat the leaves. And then when it gets very hot, they are fried like potato chips. So, thank you. I really appreciate your donation to the emergency garden. So, you can use this if your temperatures are 85 or below. I would say 80. Because every time you spray it with the pure cold pressed neem oil and water, like I said, the water will dry up 
and then you've got your plants just coated. And you can look at the leaves of these plants that I just brought in just for this presentation tonight. And you will see that you, they're not real shiny. Because right now, at 98 degrees, and tomorrow, guys, it is going to be 102. Let's not even talk about what the heat index temperature is going to be. So that means that I have to get up early, like I do every day anyway, and water my garden and tend to everything that I need to do because by about 10 or 11 o'clock, I can't go outside, okay? All right. Yes, oh, you figured out the heat and the neem all too late. I am so sorry, lady, Lazy Liz. Somebody wants to know what aphids look like. They are really, really tiny. Um, okay, do you have you planted like uh, collards or mustard or turnip seeds? They're real small. And they will be in like a little cluster. There is like an off-white, beigey looking moth that flies around early in the spring, end of the summer. Those suckers don't die off. And what, they, what they're doing is they're flying around your plants and they will lay eggs. They're very smart. They know how to survive. They lay the le eggs on the underside. Can you see that? Of the leaves. And they'll be in like a little cluster, like a little cluster of grapes, but it, they're flat. And the eggs can be white. They can be green. They can be black. They can be a dark brownish color. But when those aphids start growing, they get embedded in the leaves and they will suck all the life out of your leaves. And if you have that all over your plant, it'll just be killing your plant slowly by sucking it off all the juice. Okay? So that's what an aphid looks like. And ladybugs will kill aphids. Now you can't be spraying a lot of insecticides and pesticides in your garden and then buy you a lot of ladybugs because all they're going to do is die. So ladybugs, praying mantis, those creatures I know are beneficial for your garden. Another thing, believe it or not, that will eat aphids is um, uh, snakes and frogs. A lot of people panic. When they see those little garter snakes, those little skinny snakes that look like a, as I was saying earlier when I first came on, that look like a fat worm, those will eat aphids in your frogs. I love to see frogs and lizards. Um, they love the smell of peppermint. I have a, a tea garden where I have nothing but Texas Star Hibiscus and I have um, peppermint. And almost every time I'm water it, watering it, I can see uh, lizards running, you know, jumping and whatever. Okay. Aphids are hideous. They will attack your tomato plants, beans. I don't know nothing that aphids have an attack other than my comfrey plants. Okay. Did I get everyone's questions? I have a one gallon spray applicator with the hose for spraying insects off of my plants. Very good. Hello, Hypercentric. It's so good to see you. I'm just going back and making sure that I've answered all the questions and then I'm going to move on to what I told you guys I was going to. Oh, Rachel says, my peas are browning at the bottom, but still growing. Should I be, I think you were probably saying concerned. Rachel, it depends on where you are. Your, your peas are going to die back. If they're sweet peas or snap peas or, you know, cold, cold hardy plant. But if they're like cow peas, uh, black eyed peas, um, I'm trying to think of some others that are, uh, are, are, are heat tolerant, then you might not be giving them enough water. Okay. What do you use to treat worms on corn plants? That's a really good one, um, Crafty Mom. I think that's your name. Yes. Okay. This is what I do when I grow corn. 
when you see that your corn is starting to tassel, and you know what that those silk little tassels, each tassel will turn into an embryo, which will be a kernel of corn. So when you see your corn starting to swell because they're producing kernels of corn, you want to pull back just a little and you can use like a dropper or some little small applicator bottle, like hair coloring. You know, I always go back to cosmetology. And you can put an oil and it will slide down the tassel and the worms will die. They can't attach to the kernels of corn and suck the juice out of them. The worms will die. But you have to get it right at the precise time when you notice that your corn starts to swell up a little bit and it has a lot of tassels. Putting it on too early will prevent pollination because you know that corn is pollinated through the wind. That's why it is recommended that you plant them close together. And when the wind blows, the tassels, you feel me, spreads the pollen. Okay. So I think I've answered that question. Crafty Mom, if that wasn't enough um, information for you, email me and I'll tell you some other things. But that's the main thing. Thank you, Lisa. I am so happy that you are learning. This is my mission. Okay, here we go. I tried to get up early, but the rain has brought on hordes of mosquitoes. I have to dress in a hazmat suit and work in the garden. The little gangsters bite right through my clothes. Okay, Lazy Liz Life, I have a, um, I have a video. Look on my playlist that says insects and pests. I think that's what I named it. You could take mouthwash, any kind of brand, any, I use a generic brand. Let me go get it. And you want to put equal parts of mouthwash and water in a spray bottle. I got this little cheap. Can you see that? I got this little cheap little mouthwash at uh, Walgreens. I order it. And um, you put that and you spray that on you. And I guarantee you the mosquitoes won't bother you. Now, if you happen to have an arsenal of essential oils, you can put a little rosemary, you can put lavender, just a few drops. You can do uh, peppermint, you can do centrola, you could do lemon, lemongrass. Uh, I think I said most of them. You can add that into it, and that will help you even more. And you don't have to spray it on your skin. You can. It won't hurt you. But you can just spray it around your clothes. Okay? All right. Welcome to the live. Thank you for putting the playlist up, Green Organic Love. Thank you, daughter. Okay. Now, I brought some peppers inside because I wanted to share these with you. This first pepper is, in January, it was one year old. Can you guys see that? I'm just going to raise the tripod up so you can get the length. I mean, the uh, height of it. Can everybody see that? And you can see that it's changing colors right here. This is a yellow California Wonder Pepper. I got seeds from Pepper Creek. And I started the seeds in 2019 inside my home in my grow room. And the plant was a year old. The plant was a year old in January. Now, let me show you a couple of things about that plant. Can you see? I'm going to move back. Can you see right here? 
I'm gonna pick it up just a little bit, it's heavy. There's one drainage hole, can everybody see that? There's one drainage hole right there, and there's one drainage hole right behind it. There are no drainage holes in the bottom. The reason why I do that is because that would allow me to have an inch of water, a reservoir, that the plant can soak up water when it needs it. Now, of course, we have a winter here. Uh, a couple years ago, it got down to 16 degrees. Peppers plants cannot survive freezing temperatures. So if you want to do this, you can bring this inside your home in your grow room, or if you have a greenhouse that you can heat during the winter, that's what you do. But during the winter, you don't feed it. You only water it once a month. I set alarms at my phone and I have a gardening journal. And also, you want to take the plant and you want to make it go into dormancy by cutting it down about a foot. Now the plant starts about right here. So I guess about a foot or a foot and a half. Any leaf that falls out that's good is just going to compost. You want to cut it straight across. You don't want to feed it. You don't want to flood it with too much water. Okay? Because you want it to go into dormancy. You're just basically keeping it alive. Everybody got that? Don't try to make it produce peppers. That's not what you're doing. You're just trying to get this pepper to grow like a tree. This one is just a year old in January. So now it's a year and a half old. Now I'm going to I'm going to put this plant down and then I'm going to put this one on it. And it's heavy too. Can you see this one? I'm going to move the tripod so you can see better. I cut this plant down to here in January. And I want you to just look at all the blooms that you can see on here. I counted it earlier today. I think I went too fast. And there are 13 fully formed peppers on here and nine little bitty peppers here. This plant turned three years old in January, all grown from a seed. In the winter time, I had to force this plant to go into dormancy because it kept putting on small peppers, like this size here. And I need to hurry up and go and harvest some of these. In the summertime, the plant will put on more peppers and more growth because all of this was cut down. If you go back in some of my old videos, you will see. You will see where I cut those peppers down. Okay? Somebody told me that peppers get real prolific if you keep them for a couple years because I will always just start seeds in January. Pull the plants up, throw them in the compost, and start over. I don't remember who it was but they said, try it. If you try it one time, you'll never, uh, you'll never regret it. And you should always put some in a container. Now this year, before the pandemic hit, I decided that I would do an experiment during the winter, this coming winter. And I planted a whole row of sweet peppers. I think I... I think I got one habanero plant. This year, I'm going to experiment and let them grow. I'm not going to put them in dormancy. I'm going to donate all the peppers that they produce this uh, spring and summer. But during the winter, I'm going to experiment and see if I can keep them alive. I'm still going to have these two. Okay? And it's a beautiful thing, guys, to have peppers when nobody else is having peppers. I see my face is cut off. Let me put this back. 
That's better, right? Okay. Yeah, so right now, before I brought these in the house, I mixed them with my bug juice. Guys, you remember, if you watched my video the other day, that I took the scraps of my onions, I took some of my homegrown garlic, and I just let it ferment in a big pot on my stove, no heat, for a whole week. And you know what? It really didn't smell bad. I guess because I know the smell of fish emulsion, and I know the smell of uh, comfrey liquid fertilizer that I make. This didn't really smell that bad. So after, excuse me, after a week, I added about a cup of red pepper flakes, also grown in my garden. I'm using everything that I can grow back into my garden to help me continue to grow. And so if you saw that video, you would know that this is how it looks when you get done. Because I boiled it with the red pepper flakes for 30 minutes, stirred it constantly, you know, like every 10 minutes or so, making sure that it wouldn't stick. And once it comes to a boil, I turn my gas all the way down to the lowest setting and let it simmer. Then after it was completely cooled, as I showed you in the video, I strained it several times. And when you, you just spray this, and, and this is not even a mist, you don't have to worry about it damaging your leaves, damaging your fruit, anything like that. Dion Gray. Oh, wow. Thank you very much, Dion. He sent me um, some money through my cash app, guys. Thank you very much. Mm. Thank you so much. So, uh, yeah, so you don't have to worry about it because it has a little oil because, you know, there's onion, uh, there's oil in onion and there is oil in garlic, naturally, but not in anything that will hurt your plant. And guys, I gotta move this out the way because <coughs> it's making me cough. Because I have a little fan right here on low. And the smell, if it makes me cough, you can imagine what it does to little moths and things that are flying around in your garden trying to lay eggs on your babies. I call them my babies. Because any time I take a tiny seed and God allows me to grow that into a plant and that plant can look like a tree. And I, and I, and I witness it, it every step of the way. Those are my babies. All my children are grown. They're my babies. And I go to war protecting my babies. And it took me a long time to figure out that I don't need to spend a whole lot of money buying things that I can make myself. Okay. Love notes. Do you dehydrate peppers? You know, I, I really haven't. Um, because I like them. My, my favorite way to store my peppers is to roast them and then can them in olive oil. Man, it's, some, it's something about a roasted pepper, all the juice, when it dries up, it leaves the sweetness behind. If you don't believe me, try it. Look on my playlist on canning and you will see uh, a video or two on roasted peppers. It is absolutely delicious. So I use sweet peppers in salads. I use sweet peppers in pasta sauce, spaghetti sauce. And I like to uh, store them in olive oil. I do freeze some. And by the way, since you brought that up, peppers and onions are the two things that are very popular that people like to grow that you can put in the freezer and you don't have to blanch them. This time last year, my sister, I have one sister, she came to visit me from Indiana, and then we went to Disney World after she was here about three weeks. 
and I was we were harvesting stuff every day, every day, every day. And she said she loved my my um food processor processor was broke. And she said, Don't worry about it. It was just something about cutting up the onions and the pepper. She loved it. So she did a lot of that for me. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, thank you, Rose, for me. Thank you so much. Hey, a beautiful Nest TV. Nice to uh see you. Thank you for coming in. Okay. How do you keep squirrels out your garden? Okay, I gotta get up one more time. <laughs> I use these two products. This is Repel All. Can you see that? I gotta hold it at an angle. Repel All, this is in the liquid form. You just spray it around the perimeter of your yard and your privacy fence, however situation around your garden base, I don't know what your situation is. And then here are the pellets that you can use. It's the same thing without the water. And you can just sprinkle these. And these are non-toxic. They are animal friendly. They won't harm your plants or your pets. You can use it all year round. And I love it. My nephew told, told me about this product and I was at his house for uh, Thanksgiving and I, and he said, you're going to get it, Auntie? I said, I already got it. <laughs> I had already ordered it before we could finish our conversation. So, yeah, when I found out it was friendly to pets and stuff. Now, I need to tell you what it does. The scent gets into their nostrils and it stings them. Kind of like what I'm feeling right now from the pepper spray that I just sprayed. But after a while, they will be come desensitized to it so you got to do a combination of things and also you got to realize that you're gonna some of your harvest you're gonna have to share with the squirrels because i can't get up in my gala apple tree that's 10 or 12 feet tall they can have the apples at the top i'm gonna get the apples at the middle and the bottom because i can't put that repellent uh rodent repellent up there in the apple tree does that make sense Okay, great. Hey, Dan, nice to see you. Thank you so much. I'm glad you're here. Anybody else? Hello, Rosalind. Okay. I have some renegade squirrels constantly getting in my raised beds. Oh, man, even in your potted plants. Well, this won't hurt your plants. I would put this, I would put a little bit, either one, the liquid or the um or the uh you know the little pellets hello loving life in houston okay so now are there any questions about how you can keep those pepper plants alive you can, if you live in an area like i grew up in indiana we had basements you could even put that pepper plant in the basement and make it go into dormancy as long as it's not freezing. You don't have to put any grow lights on it. You don't have to put it, if you put it in a grow room or spare bedroom, you don't have to worry about it at all. Just water it once a month and no fertilizer. Okay? All right. Hi, Tommy. Good to see you. Hello, Mahogany. Hello, Jeannie's Farmhouse. Okay. All right. Now, I was going to talk to you guys also about cloning tomato plants. That's what my post said. Now, I don't know if you all know this, and some of you gardeners that have been gardening for a while. Hello, Naked Gardener. Now is the time. For example, let me share this with you. Let's talk a little bit about tomatoes first. All of my tomatoes have been harvested. I don't struggle trying to keep tomato plants alive and it's gonna be 102 tomorrow. 
this tomato will never turn ripe because it is a heirloom green variety. It's called emerald green. Okay, so when you saw my video and you saw me, <coughs> excuse me, harvesting a lot of green tomatoes, all of them were not green tomatoes that are going to turn ripe. Does that make sense? Okay. And the way you can tell that this tomato is ripe, one, it's soft and it has like a tinge of yellow to it. Emerald green. There's another one called um, Green Giant. Um, but all of those seeds can be purchased off of um, Baker Creek. I wanted a green tomato that had a sweetness to it that I could use for fried green tomatoes. Because I don't like my green tomatoes, fried green tomatoes green. I like them when they just turn and blush. Because that's when they have all the sugar in them that they're, that they're going to get. Did you know that a tomato would not lose its sweetness if you pull it too early, if you harvest them just when they turn and blush? Now, we had a lot of rain. We got so much rain that I had root rot. So I went ahead and I harvested my tomatoes. And they're right here on my dining room table. Now, I want you to excuse me for a minute because I'm getting ready to go to my freezer. And I'm going to show you what I do to my tomatoes until I get enough. Can you see that? Can you see that? frozen. I just take them and put a big Ziploc bag and freeze them. And I got like three bags right now in the freezer. And then when I have enough, I make my pasta sauce. So instead of me trying to do little small batches, I want to fill that water bath can up and get it all done at one time. Because it's hot here. Like I said, tomorrow it's going to be 102. Let me show you something. This is how I love my fried green tomatoes. When they're about like that. Tomorrow this tomato will be red. In two days, this one will be red. Can you see the little blush? And this is a real green one. This has a crack, a stress crack when you get too much rain. And so when I had those real big tomatoes, and I got a lot of them over here, and we had all that rain, I did not want my tomatoes to start splitting. So sometimes you have to cut your losses. But you have to realize that I grow tomatoes all year long. I even grow them in the wintertime in the greenhouse. So I got several emails wanting to know why did I pull my tomatoes early. Two reasons. One, too much rain, which gave us root rot, and I didn't want my tomatoes to crack. Two, tomatoes will only ripen on the vine when it gets 85, 90 degrees or more. Any little bloom on there would just dry up and shrivel away. So all the blooms were just shriveling away. So I cut my losses. I pulled all my tomatoes, checked the status of my soil because I've been battling knotted root. I talk about that in that video uh, that I made about peppers and tomatoes. And I wanted to see what was going on up under that soil. And thank God the root rot is, pardon me, the knotted root is gone. Then I wanted to put in its place eggplant for my emergency garden. No, I did not start the emergency garden um, eggplant by seed. One, I had too much going on trying to grow radish, four types of kale, mustard greens, uh, butter crunch, lettuce, 
I think it was three different types of radish and getting it distributed and having people to come to my front porch and pick it up because I didn't want to come in contact with people. So that was a whole lot of work. So in trying to start seeds, I couldn't do all that. So I went ahead and bought transplants. Buying these transplants from Lowe's. And I popped them in. Now, this is the deal with that. When you get those plants from the big box stores or even a reputable nursery, please know that they have been in a greenhouse. And they've been growing in ideal conditions with the right humidity, the right amount of grow light, the, the right temperature. And then they ship them off and stock the stores with them. And they some of them have the plants inside of the stores under air conditioning. Or they're outside in big, tall trays with rows and rows so they're getting filtered sun. Then you come home, and I'm, this is the number one email that I'm getting right now. I put my plants in the ground, and then all of a sudden they just die. Well, you got to acclimate them. So I use a 50% shade cloth. Now, I saw Green Organic Love. She had a beautiful video the other day where she was using a sheer curtain. It'll work. You can use sheets. If you're having a hard time with um, finances right now because you're not working, and you, you know, your income is not where it used to be, go to the Goodwill. Go to the Salvation Army. Pick up little thin sheets. Clips. Do whatever you have to do to protect them so that you don't put them in full sun all at one time. Angela, um, Green Organic Love, would you post my email address, please? So, I have, on my phone, I have an alarm set. Eight o'clock, it says garden. I know what I gotta do. I go outside, I got my spray bottle, I remove the clips from my 50% shade cloth, let them breathe all night. Miss the little of my bug juice. And then I have another uh, alarm that tells me at nine o'clock, put the shade cloths back on. So after the plants get acclimated and they get well established, then I'll leave that shade cloth off more and more. But not around this time of the year, because at 102 degree temperature, a 50% shade cloth will lower your temperature about 5, 7, 10 degrees, depending on if you have created microclimates in your garden. So I have a food forest. So I have a greenhouse, a 20-foot greenhouse. And I hope I'm not coming across bragging because I'm not. Because I didn't play, pay that much for, for it, y'all. I got it off eBay. I, made, I won the bid. It was a blessing. I paid less than $200, okay? And then I have an old raggedy shed my late husband used to have with his tools. Then I got a really nice shed that I need to have somebody to clean out because I don't use it for nothing. And then I got all those fruit trees all the way around. So I create a microclimate. It may be 102, and I'll go out there and start working, and, and it'll feel like 102, but it's actually a little bit cooler because all of those structures, and right here on the other side of my yard, I have a little raggedy gazebo. I, I, I say raggedy. It's not raggedy. It's just need a new cover. And I could have bought a new cover but I wasn't spending money on my emergency garden. But sometimes you have to put yourself second. And it's not all about how pretty something looks. It's about, is it productive? Is it meeting your goal? And my goal was to grow some extra emergency food to give to people. When I went to Kroger's, the day before our city went on lockdown and, and grapes were four ninety nine a pound, I said, uh, uh. I look, went to the canned good aisle and Green beans that they normally sell for 49 cents a can was marked up to $1.79 a can. Now things have gotten, you know, kind of mellowed out and prices are, you know, at least in my area, prices have kind of like stabilized and you can find toilet paper and all that other stuff. But, oh, wait a minute, guys. Tammy W. Stanky S. 
Sankey, S-M-E-N-K-E-Y, sent me a blessing through my cash app. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. So, um, yeah, so I, I was on a mission to start that emergency garden. But the only problem that I really didn't think about was, if you watch my videos, you'll see my grandkids in the videos. Uh, Angela's Busy Bee Garden, Green Organic Love. There's some people in here that have been with me for a long time on YouTube, and they know that my grandkids was helping me physically doing the work. But I had to do it all myself, guys. And I bit off more than I could chew. But I made it through. I just kept pushing through. I just take, took, took breaks, stay hydrated, drink a lot of water, and I still got a lot of stuff done. The only thing that I didn't do that I really wanted to do was to show a lot of big piles of wood chips that I have. Physically, I just can't do that anymore. And uh, yeah, so I'm looking forward to the day when my grandchildren can come back and help me. Thank you, Miss Brenda Allen. She said, I'm a blessing to others. God bless, bless you. I missed it. And I'm just, I love you and I appreciate you. And I'm so happy that you love my videos. And I've been telling people this, and I'm going to say it again. I had no in, uh, desire or I had no knowledge that you could make money off of YouTube when I started doing you, uh, YouTube videos in 2015. Let me share this with you all real quick. I'm a breast cancer survivor. 28 years uh, last October. And I've always loved gardening, but I'm, I'm, I basically just grew peppers and tomatoes and collard greens and I bought the tomato starts and the pepper starts and I grew the collard greens and I never stopped working. I ran my business. I managed beauty school. I never stopped working. But the treatments that I had to battle that cancer gave me uh, tumors in my neck. And that's why you see, I always wear a choker. I don't mind showing you all when I had that radiation therapy, it discolored you know, my neck, my pigmentation is different there. So you see a difference in here and here and this. Long story short, I had to have a, uh, several tumors removed. I think it was 2015, around the same time I started doing YouTube videos. Because I couldn't talk for about six months. And I love to sing. And I couldn't sing. I was singing down here in baritone bass, whatever. And so I was so excited. I think that was 2014 when I had the surgery. When I, I was so excited that I could get my voice back, that I got my voice back, that I started making videos. <laughs> and the time, I think I only had two grandchildren. You know, I didn't take care of them. Uh, I was, you know, I had to retire early. So I needed purpose. And I was a cosmetology educator for over 30 years. So I just started making videos. Go back and look at them. You see some of them like a minute. Some of them weren't even a minute. <laughs> some of them just a couple of minutes. But my voice got stronger and stronger and stronger. And some people even commented and said, why did your voice go up and down? I forgot what the, the term is, but I have a musical background, same professionally gospel. So, I learned a long time ago that if I talk like this all the time in monotone tones, my students will go to sleep. But if I started talking like, hey, let me show you what we're going to do today. We're getting ready to do some pin curls, okay? They loved it. So, I used that same technique that, that I grasped or capture my students' attention, I start, throughout the years, I just started doing that in the videos. And my voice got stronger and stronger and stronger. And then eventually I was able to sing again. Not like I used to, but I thank God for the voice that I do have. Anyway, I just want to share that with you all. That's a little of my testimony that um, I, I'm using my, my talent of explaining things in a simple, easy manner and my love and passion for gardening to help others. Somebody, I just read a com comment. Where can you get comfrey from? Thank you so much. This comfrey that's in my video that I released, um, was it yesterday morning? Or was it this morning? This morning. Yeah, this morning. 
um, you it is called Russian Comfrey Blocking 14. It cannot be grown from a seed. If somebody tries to sell you a seed and say that it is Russian Comfrey Blocking 14, they're lying to you. It can only be grown from a cutting. You can purchase the cuttings. I checked uh, last week. They still have them on eBay and Amazon. Because usually the same merchants are on eBay, Amazon, and Etsy. I don't deal with Etsy that much. I don't know why. But I, I've established some uh, friendships on eBay, uh, merchants that I trust. Now, I don't give you the names of any merchants. But I did that once, and it backfired on me, and they weren't happy with I, what I recommended. So I just tell you to check it out for yourself. But what I will tell you to do is go and look at the ratings. And eBay is a division of PayPal. So all of the reviews are legit. And all of the percentages of complaints or reviews are legit. So look for a merchant that has at least a 98% or higher rating. If you can get one that's 100 or 98%, I mean, 99%, that's, that's even better. Okay? So, um, yeah. eBay, Amazon for comfrey cuttings. Okay. Let me see if I'm missing anybody's questions. Voice inflection in your speech makes it more interesting to listen to. Yes. I'll tell you about my son. He's a teacher now. But when he was in the fourth grade, shortly after we moved from, to Texas, um, he made really good grades uh, in our, no, we lived in Fort Worth first, and then we moved to Arlington. And the school system in Arlington is open classrooms. There's no doors. There was just like bookshelves that separated uh, the classrooms like partitions. So I got a call from one of his, his teachers. She said he's not doing well and he doesn't pay attention. And I'm going like, well, you know, he's, like I said, right today, this, this young man is a teacher and a, and a coach. And uh, he was always a good student. I, I didn't understand. So she invited me over to the school and I took off from work and I went over to the school. And I sat there and I observed my son. Well, this is how his teacher talked. Good morning, students. Turn to page 128. We're going to go over chapter five. She was boring as, I was getting ready to say hell. So I'm just going to go ahead and say it. Well, the teacher in the next class, she was, good morning, students. Okay, we got our thinking caps on today. We're going to turn to chapter five, page 128. My son was in the next classroom. You understand? Because he, he, his attention was being held by the teacher that was very creative and motivating in her presentation. And he was listening to her. He wasn't paying any attention. He zoomed out. I didn't want to hurt the teacher's feelings. So I asked to have a meeting with the principal. And I said, I think my son needs a fresh start. I don't want to say your voice is boring as hell. <laughs> but they, my son needed a fresh start. Can you transfer him? And they put him in another classroom and didn't have any more problems. Thank you, Gardney with Joy. So, yeah. Uh, so that's why I, I talk the way I do. I can't help it. It's because I sing and because I've been doing this a long time. So do comfrey grow hot in heat in the... Yeah, sure. It'll grow... Comfrey will grow in all climates. Oh, whether it'll die back. But, see, what's so significant about comfrey is this. It has a very large tap root that goes way down in the soil and pulls up those natural resources, the nutrients in the soil that your plants can't reach. It goes uh, deeper than some tree roots. Okay? So even if the leaves die back in some climates, those roots are so deep and they're so uh, protected, it's going to come back in the spring. 
and they grow in all soil types. If you have clay soil, if you, you know, whatever soil you have, sandy soil, soil with rocks in it, country will grow anywhere. It'll grow in full sun. It'll grow in shade. Man, I got so much country out there, I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> but I'm going to keep making my fertilizer so I don't have to uh, spin it. A couple people asked me um, if I should uh, would sell the... No, I'm not going to sell any cutting. I can't get into that. Because it's just... This is something I don't want to do. I don't want to be going to the post office, boxing it up, and, you know. But anyway... Um, yeah okay what am i doing wrong my zucchini squash and peppers they grow tiny and fall off and die are you using a lot of fish emulsion because if your plant is getting too much nitrogen that could be an issue okay did i miss how often to feed fruiting veggies once a month and when you plant your vegetables, try to put a whole lot of homemade compost. I ran out. And black cow is one of the good uh, cow manure and humus, uh, uh, you know what I'm trying to say, uh, compost that you can buy. You can't keep it in stock. They're running out of potting soil. They're running out of seeds. They're running out of uh, organic com uh, 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 compost. I already said that. A lot of things in certain areas, they are selling off real fast. How do you feel about grass in the garden? I don't have any grass. My children thought I was crazy because I had the beautiful lawn with the sun deck, with the tree and the chairs and the umbrella. And I started smothering out my grass with compost. I'm sorry, with cardboard and then with chips. Chipdrop.com. In some areas of the, of the country, they will give you free wood chips. They deal with a lot of arborists across the country. If you live in a rural area, you might not be able to get them. But there are other free resources. You can get wood chips from your uh, city. You can get soil and compost from your city. But I, I'm registered with, with wood chip. No, it's called chipdrop.com. And I, that's how I get my wood chips. Okay, I'm waiting on a top drop from a tree company. Very good. And my neighbor has a whole lot of trees. And whenever he has the arborist to come out, they give me his wood chips. He, you know, something that we have. Blocking can only be spread via root cuttings. Yes, ma'am. What's so special about comfrey? Thank you, the crystal rain. Comfrey has... Uh, all the nutrients that your plant needs to survive, the NPK. So if you make a tea out of it, you can feed it instantly. You also can do a foliar feed where you spray it on your plants. Dilute it like 1, 2, 10, 12 portions of water. But it's best to put it into your, uh, your root system. Now a lot of people, let's think, let's, a lot of people are a little confused uh, about what the root system is. Oh, this is a good example. Here's your tree growing up here, right? A lot of people think they need to put the fertilizer, organic, whatever you guys decide to use, right here where the trunk of the tree is. But you really need to go out because the roots flare out. And some trees go down real deep, like the comfrey does. Uh, Moringa is one, a tree that has a real a long tap root. Um, persimmons, Fuyu persimmons has a real deep tap root. You don't never have to fertilize that persimmon tree because it's going to go down real deep and pull out what other trees can't get. I've never fertilized my persimmon tree ever. And I learned that from Lead Farmer 73. And he's also the one that taught me about why your fruit drops off a fruit tree, especially when it's a new tree. It is establishing at new roots. It's trying to get adjusted to the environment that you took it from, a controlled greenhouse or nursery. 
or a field where they're controlling everything, and then you they put it in a pot, and the, and the roots are going growing around in a circle, in a circle, in a circle. Then you come home, and you rough it up a little bit, and you move it out of the container, and you dig your hole, and you drop it in there. Well, it's going like, well, where, where am I? Oh, my, it's cold. Oh, God, the sun is full right down on me. So you're changing the environment. And even though it starts to try to produce fruit, it drops off. This is what I'm doing. Okay. Good evening. I just purchased a pink guava, guava, guava clearance sale. Any suggestions? I've never grown that one. I've never grown any guavas. I'm sorry. But I would imagine that you might want to shade it a little bit if it's a new tree. I don't know what climbing you are in, Sheila, but... You know, if it's inside of a store, something, you know, where it's in an atmosphere where it's being air conditioned, you throw it into 102 degrees. I can't plant fruit trees right now. I can't plant. I don't care what's on sale. I bought them. I've got them down cheap at $6 at Lowe's. Got them, stuck them in the ground. They just die. It's too hot. My two newest uh, fruit trees that I got in February, they are up under my gazebo. Because it's just too hot. I think I'm February or March. It might have been March. Okay. Do you put. Is this a private conversation? I mean it's not private. A separate conversation about leaves. The bug recipe spray is in the video that I dropped this morning. Just go look to my playlist. Some dandelions I keep because the bees love them. Yes. Yeah, I was one of those idiots that, you know, we got them little wee poppers and all that stuff. Had one of the prettiest lawns on the block. My husband did the front. I did all the flowers and weeds would come up and we just pop them. It had, <laughs> down the line, we call it a weed, but it has a lot of medicinal properties. You can read up on it. A lot of people make jelly. They swear, I've never made it before, but they make uh, salve. They make jelly. They say it tastes like honey. And some people even cook uh, down the line greens. Do you put the leaves on top of the bed or blend it? Is that for me, Janae, or somebody else? Because if you're asking me, I, I use all of my fruit tree leaves in my raised garden beds and in my containers until I run out. What do I need to do now to save my peppers and squash since I'm using too much fish fertilizer? If, if that's the case, just don't give it anything right now. You can give it a little garden line. You can give it compost tea. You can give it the, uh, if you have, you don't, probably don't have the, the comfrey. Just hold off. Just hold off on the fish fertilizer right now. Because usually when you give a plant too much nitrogen, just withdraw it. Okay? Okay, I hope I answered your question. Yes, Tommy, the bees love the dandelions. And the dandelions are growing in the wintertime. And we gardeners tell people all the time, please stop killing the dandelions because you, you're killing off the bee population. The first source of pollen that they get is from the dandelions. Okay. My daughter brought me my first fruit tree for Mother's Day and it just flowered. Very good. Um, somebody's saying something about guava. I think they mentioned something about Dan, uh, food, premiculture food forest. I'm not sure if he has a guava, but I do know that, um, can't think of her name right now. If you email me, I'll give you some sites that you can go to, um, YouTubers that you can go to. The young lady, I don't remember your name, with the guava. Um, tree, if you email me, I'll give you some information. How do you grow your spinach and lettuce? I can't grow spinach and lettuce right now, baby. It's too hot. I harvested it all. I pulled it all. And I left uh, three clusters or clumps of spinach that's going, not spinach, yes, one cluster of spinach and three of uh, Brother Country lettuce. And I put them in a separate container, turn that soil over, and start putting other stuff in because it's too hot. 
here right now. Yes, there are a lot of things you can do with them. I assume you're talking about the dandelion. Hello, Julia RTV. Hello, Kelly. Hello, Janae. All of my lettuce has died off. Should I... Yes, my lettuce died off. Should I start it from seed? Oh, yes. One of the easiest things to grow is lettuce. Anything green. Mustard, turnip, spinach, collards, all kind of greens. Kale, they're easy to start from seed. Depending on where you are, if you can grow at this time of year. I can't. The only greens that I can grow very well this time of year is kale. And that has to be the curly type. And I got so much of it can that I don't need it and Swiss yard, but I have to shade it. Wait till August to start spinach, it's too hot now. Thank you, buddies, girl, I agree with you 100%. Hey, Sheila, you're talking to Sheila, okay. Okay, somebody said they might dig up some, you can buy the seeds, I bought dandelion seeds. They might dig up some dandelions to, to uh, yeah, my spinach burned up, Lesson learned. That's right. Those are the best lessons. Once you go through something, you know. How many of you all keep a journal? If you keep a gardening journal, type yes, please. You in North Carolina, Janae? You probably could grow some spinach in the, sh in the shade. Those of you that keep a gardening journal... Yes, Nikki Gardner, good to see you. Hey, Essie. Hey, Randy, I didn't know you were here. Yes, keep a gardening journal. Write down the date that you started your seeds, whether it's inside or you directly sold them. Write down what variety it was. Write when it went to seed. Write if you were able to accumulate and save those seeds. And of course, you got to like it. I'll be 66 years old next month. I don't grow anything anymore that I don't like. I'm not growing longevity spinach. I'm not growing Malabar spinach. I'm not trying to force myself to like something that I don't like. Grow what you like. And somebody said they put it on the calendar. Very good. Garden Love. That was her name. The lady about the guava tree. Check out Garden Love's channel. Oh, somebody told me I got my groove on. I didn't know that. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, I'll be 66 years old, July 4th. So I don't play around. If I try a certain carrot and uh, mm, it's not working, I'm not wasting my time. Right now, I'm into Parisian carrots, the little round little ball carrots i get them from baker creek that's all i'm growing now i love them thank you so much miss mb okay um i write down storms and heat waves and low temperatures so i can see the, th that's right thank you thank you very good somebody tell me something that you write down in your journal other than what i already named and what buddy's girls garden just named Thank you, Karen. Yes, Janae, track the sun. Uh, track the sun. Where does it hit your garden? See, I, I, I've, been, I've been in my home over 30 years. So I knew that that southern sun is right there. I had put my first greenhouse facing this way, facing west. When I put the last greenhouse, I knew exactly where I put, put it. See, I have to have a shade cloth on top of my greenhouse to get so much sun. If I don't put a shade cloth on it, it's like 120 degrees in there. I, it's probably hotter than that, but that's as far as the thermometer would go. So it has a 50% shade cloth over the whole thing. Because it's in full southern exposure. The influx of and types of bugs. Yes. If you're in the mesquite area for business, do you ever give a garden tour? Not right now. Now, I, I have in the past, but not right now with the pandemic. It'll be another year or two before I let people in here. Okay, something about tea is going so fast. Where I purchased the seeds, etc. Yes, I, I mentioned that. 
where you got your seeds and blah, 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 blah. Document what plants survive a heavy rain? Yes, and which ones did not? Which ones that were more, um, that handled the bugs better than others? For example, uh, I'm growing a little crook, crook, crook neck squash, but I always end up pulling up the plants because I get uh, bombarded with squash bugs. But the blue hubbard and the butternut squash, I don't get as many squash bugs as I do those other ones, those summer squashes. That's a waste of space in your garden when you plant something you don't like. Thank you. That is exactly right. You end up canning it or whatever, preserving it, dehydrating, you end up giving it away. So the next thing I want to know is how many of you are growing to be self-sufficient? Let me know. Just, just type in your name. Uh, just type in your name. Compost pile. Very good. Track the sun. Thank you for, for the uh, early birthday. How many of you are growing to feed your families? How many of you growing to, to thank you, to just to be healthier? Wendy, you're doing like me, donating food. Oh, very good. Okay. Very good. Sorry about that, guys. It's one of my alarms for my greenhouse. <laughs> I got to check on the plant. I forgot to turn it off. Growing to be healthier. Yes to garden journaling. Very good. Hello, Mary. Good to see you here. Better health. Okay. Now, how many of you have children or grandchildren that you pass it on what you've learned to your grandchildren? Fungus flies. Uh, I'll talk about, I'll get your question. I might have to answer it in the email. Okay. I love it. You, you order a pop-up tent. I can grow when my learners get, gives me a limited space. I understand. Um, no grandchildren or children. The mosquito rep, rep, uh, repellent is just a inexpensive mouthwash, eco portions, and any essential oil that repels bugs. Like um, you can go back and watch this live after it's over with because it's too much information. T trying to teach your children. See, my love of gardening started with my grandparents. I helped my grandparents out when I was real little. And some, some of my cousins, oh Lord, we got a shell pea. I, did, I loved it. I loved candy with my grandmother. I loved everything about it. I loved with my, my grandmother and grandfather. And we used to can apples and peaches. And I mean, I just, I just loved it. Now, when I was younger and raising my family, I didn't have time. Because I had a salon in a shopping mall for 10 years. So we had to be at that one. Open and closed. And so I didn't, you know, have no desire to do that. Um, but as I got older and my kids, you know, they, they, my daughter has a garden. She used to say, when I get grown, I'm never going to have a garden. Shoot. She got a pretty garden, guys. And her children love it. And one thing I noticed about my grandchildren is this. Okay, somebody is in here advertising political stuff. I'm going to go ahead and remove that because this, that's not the place. This is not the place. I don't talk about politics. I don't talk about different religions. I do uh, let people know I am a Christian and I love God, but I don't debate it. But no, um, no politics in here, guys. This is not what people tune in, in this chat today for. Uh, yeah, um, what I wanted to share with you, my last grandchild, I raised her since I had retired uh, from a baby until she went to pre-K. And I asked my daughter and son-in-law, can I do something different from, with her? 
And they said, what? I said, no baby food. I would like to give her food from the garden, fresh fruits and vegetables, because I can all of my fruit without sugar. And that little girl eats everything. And I had her brother just for a short period of time because I, you know, I was working. And like, and he's a real picky eater. But if children learn where food comes from, and you give them a little watering can, and you let them go and water besides you, and you let them harvest the strawberries, you let them harvest the blueberries, they love it. Okay? So we we growing bananas. I don't, they haven't dropped any fruit yet this year, but we got them last year. I've got oranges. I have apples. I have pears. Not a whole lot, but each year, the harvest will get bigger and bigger. I've got grapes. I've got muscadines. I've got pomegranates. I have persimmons. Uh, probably not even remember. Lemons, limes, a lot of stuff. Over 60 bushes, trees, and vines. But when those kids see it, I'm growing sugar cane. The kids, my grandkids can't wait to taste it again this year. They learn where food comes from and they have a better respect and appreciation for their food. Sweet potatoes, beans, peas, corn. I can go on and on and on talking about what I'm raising. Okay, can you suggest anything edible that will grow in shade? Yes. All your leafy greens, providing you're not in a real hot climate. And you can put things in containers and move them. You can grow like cherry tomatoes and move them in a container. Like, you know what I showed you guys when my plants were growing, my peppers are growing in. Get you some big containers. Get you like a little trolley like this so I can't lift it up and show you. And then you can move it. I have those little uh, dollies up under my plant so I can move them around. Miss Cheryl, I need you to visit my backyard fruit trees and tell me what I'm doing wrong. Ty Lily, I can do a Zoom with you in the future like I'm going to do with the canning. <laughs> but I'm not coming in nobody's backyard. I um, had like a little anxiety attack because I just go and get my groceries uh, curbside order from Home Depot, and I had to physically go in the store twice this past, uh, last few days. It just felt weird because I got my mask and my gloves, and I'm just afraid because I'm a high risk. So no offense, but I'm not visiting anybody right now, nor am I letting anybody come inside of my home. Y'all have a great night. Thank you, Tommy. I appreciate you coming. Black Eyed Peas. I got Black Eyed Peas. It'll be in my next video. I posted on my Facebook page, Houston, we have black eyed peas. I'm growing California black eyed peas. And that's a part of the emergency garden that I'm going away. Somebody's saying you can buy the, get the beans from the grocery store and just drop it in the soil. I've never done it, but I've seen people do it. I've seen Randy uh, do it from Skinny Boy Randy. Lowe's has a banana tree in Louisiana. I bought all of my pups from eBay because nope, they don't have it around here. Angela, you growing black eyed peas too? Did you, Angela, do you did you buy seeds or did you just use regular grocery store seeds? I'm afraid to do that. Somebody's doing green beans and lima beans. That's great. I'm doing the green beans too. I haven't had real good luck with lima beans. I grew lima beans year before last, and I just didn't get enough. My property, it, well, Texas, you know, have pretty big lots. It's a little oversized, um, but I'm not in the rural. I'm right in the, in the suburbs. I'm not, you know, so I don't have like acres and stuff like that. I don't remember exactly. Purple Hulk peas grow good in the, in the pink eye lady. Somebody's talking about that. That grows very good. Okra grows very good in the heat. Peppers grow very good. Somebody grew lima beans from the grocery store. Oh, good. Maybe that's what I need to do. Because I, I bought them, you know. Hi, Talita. I bought them from uh, Baker Creek. Somebody's doing bush lima beans. Where did you get your seeds from? Gamora Zen. 
soak them overnight, okay? These 100, wow, I am so sorry you have to work so hard. I'm just thankful to God that you're here to the leader. Hello, Lady T, thank you for subscribing. I'm glad you're here. Okay, so did I get everybody's questions tonight? There's only one more thing that I want to talk about, and that's the shade cloth. I talked about it a little bit, and then somebody started asking a question, and I um, got sidetracked. And what I want to tell you about the shade cloth is the best time to buy it is in the wintertime. When you're dealing with small merchants on eBay, Amazon, Etsy, buy it in the wintertime. When, that's when it goes on sale. And then after a while, you just start accumulating stuff. I don't have to spend money on things like that. Somebody lives in Georgia, and I need to know when red potatoes are ready to harvest. It doesn't matter where you are as far, but I'm glad you, oh. Oh, I'm, I think I'm combining two questions. Potatoes are ready to harvest. Uh, Angela Busy B, write the, uh, her name down. She just did a potato harvest today. Angela's Busy Bee's Garden. Angela, if you're still here, I know you're at work. Um, when they, they die back, they'll fall off, the leaves get real brown, and you'll know. They'll look like they're, they're dead. That's when you harvest them. Somebody said they learned about shade cloth from me. Very good. So getting back to the shade cloth, I have 90%, 75%, and 50 and I use that 90% if I'm working with seedlings in the heat of the summer when it's 108 degrees and I'm trying to germinate seeds for my fall garden. That's when I'll use a higher grade. But for everything else, I use between 50 and 75. Hey, Watermelon Grow, is that a name? Before you go, how many months of dormancy do the pepper plant need? Just whatever your regular winter period is. So that just depends on, you know, your, your climate. No, I have not grown anything completely in shade. Because plants need a little sun to create photosynthesis. I think I said it right. My potatoes sprouted a flower. Yes! The more flowers, the better. The bigger your potatoes are going to be. Best yet journey? Yes, that's a good thing. I mentioned that uh, about bringing your pepper plants in the garage in the wintertime. Uh, Stephanie, I usually germinate the seeds outside under a shade cloth or under my gazebo. And sometimes I'll put a clip shade cloth to the gazebo frame because the netting is, doesn't give you enough filter. Yeah, so I do germinate seeds outside. And they'll germinate in one or two days. I've got it on video. Good information, Ms. Sure. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Brenda. You don't have a gar garage, yard, two kitchen. Then you can do, um, if you have a back porch, you have a spare bedroom. Um, uh, I'm just looking at something. I'm, I'm sorry, guys. You just don't have to put it in sun. Is it too late to put Man, sweet potato slips in zone eight. Zone eight where? I would think so, but I did it one year. I planted it. I got a video. If you go look at my playlist, I found a couple of sweet potatoes. I think it was four of them in my pantry. I'm talking too loud. In my pantry, and they had sprouted. And if you go down in my playlist, you're going to see some sweet potatoes with the little sprouts on them. So I went and planted the whole sweet potatoes in the soil. And then when they started producing slips, I cut them off and I put them in a milk bottle down in the soil with water 
and then I started planting them and we harvested them that was July I know we harvested them in November we did not get a big crop but they were free because they were store brought sweet potatoes Okay, let me just say it. I'm review, and I appreciate you uh, moderators for you all uh, putting people in time out or um, hiding a, a comment. If you want to promote yourself, get your own page, make your videos. Please do not come in here trying to network unprofessionally. I'm trying to choose my words very carefully. It's the time and place for everything. And I offer my email to everyone. Go to any video and look in the description box and Green Organic Love has been posting it throughout this chat. Okay, so now is the time because that person doesn't know that toward the end of my chats, I start asking everybody if they have a channel to please put yes so that everybody that's in here looking to watch other YouTubers, they will have the opportunity to do that. So if you have, you're in here tonight, please put yes and then your name will automatically pop up and people can go and view this when this chat is over and get in touch with you and start watching your videos. It's enough videos out there, guys, for everybody. We don't have to be sneaky or do things underhanded. Buddy's girl, I'm gonna check you out. Guys, I'm gonna go back and look at this stuff. When I get free time, I'm gonna check you out. If, if you've been watching me and I haven't gotten back to you, please, 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 be patient with me. I will check you out. Do you use neem oil to control bugs on your plants? Uh, Gail, you must have came in late. We talked about that. If you have 85 degree temperatures or higher, do not use neem oil because neem oil will coat your plants and the sun will beam down on it and it'll fry like chicken. So don't use it. That's why I put the insect spray on this morning in my video to show you what you can use without frying your food. All right, so everybody that put yes in here, I will check out your channels. I may just be, just do a couple hearts or say something, good morning, whatever, but um, I will be checking you guys out. Yes, Miss Boogie Johnson in a fried like chicken. I'm telling you what I know. I fried some plants. Somebody just said they fried their tomato plants. Don't use the oil. We're telling you. How to control soil gnats. I use a very mild uh, solution of 5% peroxide to 10 parts water. And you spray it. You can also spray cinnamon. cinnamon, Not spray, but sprinkle cinnamon. And the main thing is you need to keep stop keeping your, your soil so wet. Let your soil dry out. At least the top surface of the soil. So it won't be breeding gnats. Stir fry veggies. Do you spray in the cooler part of the day? Um, it doesn't matter now, Angela's Garden Sense, because I don't use any oil. So I can spray in the afternoon. I can spray in the morning. If I, I keep it in my little pocket. If I see something, I start spraying. This, this insect spray with no oil. It won't hurt. Okay. Sweet potatoes love hot weather and sun. Yes, love notes. And bottom watering helps. Yes, Game nerd mom. Ty Lily, I bought my dragon cayenne and jalapeno peppers into the garage last year. Saw it was starting to sprout, so I pulled it out and put it in the sun. It is producing peppers like crazy. Wonderful. What is that solution? Is that solution good for ants? No. The, the, the spray that I talked about? No. Uh-uh.
Yes, Tara, we do. I'll inbox you. Okay, that's a separate conversation. Okay, what was the question, Elaine? Uh, Elaine, what was the question? Oh, oh, oh about the ants? I just put hot water on the ants, but I know if it's in a garden bed, you can't do that. Um... Ants kind of just go away. I don't issue with ants. Thank you, best yet. You're my life, yes. If you would like to, okay. Somebody said the hot waters. Yeah, that's what I do. I just put some hot water on it. DE helps a little, but I, I, mm. Ants, see, the reason why I say I don't use the DE because ants usually, they're looking, for, they're looking for water. They're usually in a wet environment. They don't eat food like people think. Ants will farm aphids because aphids secrete a honeydew sticky solution. So you, wherever you see a lot of ants, you look at your plant real good. No, nine times out of ten, it's going to be aphids there. That's how I catch them on my apple trees, because they love young, tender leaves. So ant, ants look for water. And so when you put diatomaceous herb, DE, on ants, it's usually in a wet area. And once water comes in contact with DE, it's not effective. It has to be on a dry surface. You could drown out ants with plain water. That's what I'm saying. They'll move someplace else. Because usually when I water them inside of my container, I agree with you, Stephanie Valdez. They'll move on and go someplace else. The ants eat the dew off. Of yes. Yes, they sure do. They sure do. So when I see them ants crawling up my ochres, I just blast them off with water. Another thing I do, guys, is I put those yellow sticky papers. Let me see if I can find one real quick. The lady that asked me about the ants, you can get these on Amazon. You can get them on Wish. And it's a two-sided paper. And it's real sticky. And you can take that and put it on the outside of your pot. The ants will kind down and they will just be covered with this. Ants all over that paper. Also, those moths that lay um, eggs that turn into aphids, this would trap them too. Don't worry about putting these out because I did a video and I took you all in my greenhouse and I showed you all the sticky papers that I had in the greenhouse. I did it this past winter. No, was it March? It was the spring. Bees do not get trapped on here. Gnats. Flies, I'm talking too loud. Gnats, flies, moths, and ants. So if the ants are down low, you could put it on a pole, you could put it on the you know the edge of the pot. Say so this is your container right here, you could put it down here. So when they first try to crawl up into the container, it'll get them. I use cinnamon on a couple of my ant colonies in my raised bed, and they haven't been back since. Very good. Can I grow green peppers from seed, like from the grocery store? Yes. Only thing about growing uh, things from the grocery store is you have to keep in mind that people that grow produce from the grocery store grow, uh, grow hybrids. So you may not get the pepper that you remove the seeds from. It may not look the same is what I'm trying to say. But if you buy, you look up and you get a piece of produce that is not a hybrid, it will grow true to, the seed will grow true to where, where it came from. But me personally, I like to buy heirloom seeds. And that way, when I cut this pepper up, I can remove these seeds and save them. And I know that I'm going to have the same California Wonder pepper here. So I've never had any luck 
But that's not to say that you will, you won't have luck. I just have it. I love heirloom seeds. Yeah, it's the way to go. Because once you start collecting heirloom seeds, you kind of like know, you kind of like know what you're going to get. When you first start growing, you don't really know. That's kind of the excitement. But then after a while, you can look at a plant when it's just that big and you'll know what it is. I can tell you what, that sounds like I'm bragging. Orange oil and lemon oil burn the leaves of the plants. Thank you, Stephanie. I've got the orange orange oil. I can get up and go get it, but I don't want to right now because I don't want to confuse anybody. I don't want to bring out any oils. When you get past 85 degrees, put your oils up in your grow rooms, your lockers, whatever you have, basement you got, garage, put them up. Because I'm telling you, you may get frustrated and you may, okay, I'm going to just spray a little oil and I'm going to wash it off in the morning. Well, it's not going to wash off. It's going to coat the leaves and it's going to fry. Hello, Devietta or Devietta, beautiful name. Thank you for coming. Okay, guys, so when you go back and you watch this replay, you'll see everybody that says yes that has a uh, YouTube channel. Check them out. It's a lot of um, uh, YouTube gardeners out there. Learn all that you can. Uh, don't listen to just one way of doing something. Check everybody out, and then you can decide you know which methods that you want to try because there are a lot of different ways of doing things and when i tell you don't use oil on plants it's because i have burned up some plants if i tell you don't plant a fruit tree in 95 degree weather i have killed some fruit trees planting them in extreme heat if i tell you don't put a peach tree in the ground and you've got uh, the climate that you get a whole lot of water and peach trees don't like wet feet is because I have killed peach trees. So I want to pass on to you what I've learned so that you don't have to go through there. Somebody said Tanglefoot. I have some of that, but I think that's a chemical. I bought that before. Ty Lily, I've I may be wrong, but I think it's a chemical and you can spread it on a piece of paper or something or a container. I don't know if I ever threw it away or not. Ain't that the truth, Karen? 236 people watching, only 58 thumbs up? Lord Jesus. <laughs> what can I do to help my jalapeno pet, pet plant with leaf curl? It could be a deficiency. I'm not really sure, sweetie. Um, you can give. Mm, I don't want to tell you to do something. You can email me a picture so I can look, look at it, and I can, I can see better if I can see it. Thank you for doing the thumbs up, guys. I really love your channel. You're opening some two blessed baby doll. I love your name. You're a new subscriber. Thank you all for coming. Okay, guys, I want to want to keep this video longer than necessary. So, uh, if um, there aren't any other questions, my email is Cheryl's Organic Food Force. Just like it. Let me let me hit enter. Green Organic Love. Can you put the email address in there? And you can go to any one of my videos just in the description box. It's just like the name of my channel, but it is without the apostrophe at gmail.com. There may be some poisons causing the leaf to curl. See, that's what I'm thinking. If she, I don't want to say it. That's why I said email me because I don't want to embarrass anybody. But usually when you start having all that kind of stuff, it's um, chemicals. What fertilizer do you, pepper plant? I use comfrey tea, compost tea, worm castings. I use free stuff other than the worm castings. And I give them a, good, a little garden line so that you won't have blossom in rot on the bottom of your tomatoes or your peppers. Thank you, Ms. Brando, there's my email address, guys. 
online gardening class. Ms. Cheryl, do you do a lot of companion planting? Yes, ma'am. I do uh, squash with corn, bush beans with sweet potatoes, summer savory um, uh, herb with sweet potatoes. I do a lot of companion planting. Thank you, Rosalind. Okay, I'm getting ready to say goodnight, everybody. I'm so glad you enjoyed the live joy. Thank you, Tony Jackson. Thank you, Best Yet Journey. Thank you, Mary Furch. Thank you, UT33200. Are you the pepper guy? I think. Thank you, White Flowers Homestead. I haven't seen you in a while. Thank you, Etta J. Of course, you know I love you, Ty Lily. Do you know what will cause black spots on my pea-sized lemon fruit? Um, that's something I'm going to need to see the picture for. Email me a picture. Good night, Gardener Eve. Good night, GA Homesteader. Good night, Candy Container Gardening. If I missed you guys, FR Humphrey, Florence Miles, Best Yet Journey, Yard to Kitchen, GA Homesteader, Miss Grando, Linda Holmes, Aletha Hill, Karen W. I miss somebody, uh, Jeannie's Farmhouse. I love you guys. I want you to know that I appreciate you tuning into my live. I hope I've helped you in some small way or big way. You know that God loves you and that I love you too. And I'm going to sign out. Good night, everybody. Good night. If I find the X. <laughs>